make up it for later. And third, which you have almost done for me, I thought I would speak a little Hindi in the middle. Is that all right? Yes. Because if you speak English, you will be a little bit older. That's right. Right, good point. Fifth, next one. What I am going to talk about today, and I thought this is the right forum, not only because this is an institution which has uh, produced some of the great alumni, like many of you, I'm also a fan of Medadi, and an institution that has produced people like her, students like her, that institution surely deserves to share more than just academic gossip. Also because the lecture has been organized not by institution formally, but by the students, that gives me even more freedom. In this country these days, when you go to an institution, you really have to check whether you can speak what you really want to speak. So thank you, this is one of the places in the country where you can still speak what you really want to speak. And that's what I'm going to do now. No editing, no censoring, not that I censor myself very much, but in uh, formal academic institutions, sometimes one has to be a little extra mindful of the protocols. I'm glad I don't have to do that now. <laughs> what I really want to speak to you about is a danger, not just to democracy, which I must have had in mind when I accepted the topic, but to the very republic, or to the very idea of India. Today, what we face in this country is nothing short of an onslaught on the foundations of this republic. I'm going to speak to you not only about what the danger is. Many of you know this. I won't end up saying something very original. And there's no point beyond an extent of simply saying what's wrong, how rotten the situation is. Punjabi has a word that captures it best. They call it syapa. <laughs> you know, mar gaye, lut gaye, hai hai, kya ho gaya. You know, there's no point doing that. I find it, I find it cowardly to do so. So, I'll quickly pass on then to talk about why we are where we are. What is really the nature of the danger? There's something very deep underlying here. This is not just a bad accident that has happened to our country. We're dealing with something much deeper. All right, that's analysis, causality, social science, don't we all do social science? But then I would remember the, big, the most famous social scientist of 19th century, Karl Marx, who said the point, however, is to change it. So I'll remember Thesis 11, and I'll then say, what can be done about it? And that's what I'm concerned about. What is to be done? <coughs> Incidentally, this is the title of an essay I wrote about two months ago. This is in the magazine called Seminar, November issue. And much of what I have to say here today is there. Now don't walk out. I'll probably be more entertaining than an article. You can read it later. But, I'm, but those of you who get slightly interested, I hope uh, I would have a few hits on that article this evening, where you can actually read it in a somewhat terse academic language as to what I have to say. Why do I think there is an attack on the very idea of India? To my mind, the idea of India has three components. People say that India is a country, 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 
लेकिन मैं हिंदुस्तान को आज के भारत को समझता हूँ कि इसके तीन स्तंभ हैं तीन पिलर्स हैं हिंदुस्तान के और वो तीनों बहुत मॉडर्न हैं फर्स्ट द आइडिया ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी वी डिड नॉट इन्वेंट द आइडिया ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी एंड टू से दैट इज कमिंग स्ट्रेट फ्रॉम लिचवी गणतंत्र इज ऑल नॉन सेंस वी बॉर इट but we were the first country in the world that democratized the idea of democracy that democracy could be practiced in conditions of illiteracy among very poor was an idea unknown to the world it's only when democracy start you know functioned in india that we could convince the world that democracy could indeed be globalized that idea of democracy second diversity we are not the only diverse country in the world we are not the only place where diversity has existed or continues to exist diversity is the norm anything other than diversity is an aberration in nature and anywhere else and it has existed everywhere but we were the first nation state in the world to embrace diversity because in european history they thought that nation states need internal cultural homogeneity one nation one culture one religion one race one language this is the history of european nations that you could have a nation state called india with such deep diversities was unthinkable 70 years ago that it would survive was not something anyone believed we made it possible to think about it in that sense democ diversity is that second pillar on which india stands and the third is development not development per se this is not a word we coined nothing that we and not something we practice but the idea that development should be measured from the standpoint of the last person you know as gandhi ji said think of the weakest person you've ever met in your life and try and imagine would this thing benefit her or him or not the idea that development should be measured should be should mean development of the last person is something that we have contributed we have not practiced it one bit let's be honest but these are the three pillars on which the republic called india stands aaj agar hindustani hone mein koi garv karne ki baat hai aur main mehsoos karta hu ki garv hone ki baat hai to usme hindustani hone mein garv ye hona chahiye ki ye teen vichar hain jo humne duniya ko diye jiska matlab ye nahi ki hindustan mein paida ho ke humne koi kamal ka kaam kar liya hai lekin aur ye zarur ho sakta hai कि बहुत लोग जो हिंदुस्तान में पैदा नहीं हुए हैं वो हमसे ज्यादा हिंदुस्तानी है मेरे लिए नेल्सन मंडेला कहीं ज्यादा हिंदुस्तानी है फैज ज्यादा हिंदुस्तानी है इन लोगों ने उस आइडियाज को कहीं बेहतर प्रैक्टिस किया बट दीज थ्री पिलर्स कॉन्स्टिट्यूट द वेरी फाउंडेशन ऑफ आर रिपब्लिक टूडे ऑल द थ्री पिलर्स आर अंडर अटैक आज इस देश में जो खतरा है वो ये कि हमारे संविधान की हमारे गणतंत्र की ये जो तीन नींव है तीन बुनियाद है तीन स्तंभ है तीनों पे हमला हो रहा है ये पहली बार नहीं है कि हमला हुआ हो एमरजेंसी एमरजेंसी वॉज ए नॉन स्लॉट ऑन डेमोक्रेसी इन दिस कंट्री मैं तब बहुत छोटा था आप में से कुछ लोगों को याद होगा हमारे बीच दामजी भाई बैठे हैं ऐसे वरिष्ठ लोग जिन्होंने वो वक्त भी देखा था आज हम जितनी भी सुंदर कहानियां इमरजेंसी के बारे में कह लें ऑफ पॉपुलर स्ट्रगल अगेंस्ट इमरजेंसी सच बात यह है कि सब बिछे हुए पड़े थे जमीन पे सब झुक गए थे जैसा किसी ने कहा था वेन पीपल वर आस्ट टू बेंड दे स्टार्टेड क्रॉलिंग दिस इज द रियलिटी ऑफ इमरजेंसी so don't be surprised about you see on television channels every evening this happened during emergency everyone was crawling 
judiciary had given him, some of the finest judges of this country <coughs> were complicit in accepting emergency. Justice Bhagwati, Justice Chandrachur, some of the finest judges of this country, they had given a shameful judgment called the Jabalpur case, if you remember, which actually said all human rights can be suspended during emergency and that's all right. Both of them were dignified enough to apologize later on. But that had happened. So this country has seen earlier onslaughts and we've come out. Remember both the things. Remember that we've gone through this and remember that we've come out of it. Both the lessons are worth remembering. So we've seen onslaughts. What is special about the current onslaught? We've seen other onslaughts as well. 1984, massacre of six. This was an onslaught on the idea of diversity that India had embraced. 2002, Gujarat. An onslaught again on the foundations of our republic. The idea of development for the last person, I think it's only reasonable to say that we've seen onslaughts on that idea every single day of the last 70 years. So it's not the first time that our pillars are attacked. But there's something very special and sinister about what's happening now. What is sinister is this, that for the first time, all the three pillars are being attacked simultaneously. Emergency me ek pe attack tha. 1984 me dusre pe attack tha. Tino pe ek saath hamla. Itna vigorous hamla. Or aisa hamla jisme desh ki janta ke bade hisse ko shamil kiya gaya hai. Wo pehli baat. So in that sense, this is not merely a challenge to Indian democracy. It's not only a challenge to Indian nationalism. This is truly a challenge to all the foundations of our republic. A lot has happened already. All of us read newspapers. The Supreme Court me ho raha hai, aap dekh rahe hai. Pahli baar is desh ke itihaas mein Supreme Court ke char judges ne aake bahar kuch bola. Aur ye mat sochi ega ki wo keh rahe te ki Chief Justice kuch gabar kar raha hai. Please, that's not about it. It's not about four judges versus the CGI of India. They were saying something else. If you think that your senior colleague is misbehaving, if you think he's not following protocols, you don't come out and say, we don't want you to think that we had sold our souls. You don't say these things. You simply say, this fellow doesn't know how to work. We don't believe in him. Why are they talking about selling this? That They are simply saying, what they are saying is, Please don't remember us as Bhagwati and Chandrachut. <laughs> we are different. They are, this is so, this is not about judges versus CJI. It is about attack on the institution of judiciary by the executive, by the government of the day, by the ruling party of the day. Aap dekh rahe hai, parliament mein kya ho hai? और आप रोज देख रहे हैं कि मीडिया में क्या हो रहा है। Responsible media आपने देखा होगा, irresponsible media देखा होगा। You have all kinds of media in this world, but I have never come across media in this country or anywhere in the world actually, which makes it principal business to attack. Opposition all the time. Yesterday, budget is being presented, and you have a channel which says, Shouldn't Rahul Gandhi be ashamed of X, Y, Z? I don't remember Rahul Gandhi presenting the budget yesterday. You know, someone else had presented the budget yesterday. You know, he can be proud, he can be ashamed, but it's about him, it's not about someone else. For the first time, 
unlike in emergency, in emergency there was censorship, but you knew there was censorship. When I read newspapers in emergency, I knew these were censored newspapers. The government of the day could prevent newspapers from carrying some news. They could not, or they did not, or they were not smart enough then to get the newspapers to invent stories, to spin stories, to get new things put every day. That's what's happening right now. So let me not get into details of how democracy is being subverted. We hear about it every day. I don't need to even spend five, two minutes talking about how diversity is being throttled in this country. Suffice to say that the largest single minority of this country, the most truly disadvantaged minority of this country, has been reduced to the status of a second-rate citizen without any law being changed. कोई कानून नहीं बदला है, कोई संविधान नहीं बदला है, लेकिन इस देश में संविधान क्या है इसका फैसला सुप्रीम कोर्ट नहीं करता है, संविधान क्या है इसका फैसला आपके पुलिस स्टेशन का थानेदार करता है, और अगर आप उस थानेदार के पास जाते हैं और थानेदार का आपसे व्यवहार बदल जाता है, आपके लिए तो संविधान बदल गया। देश के 98% लोगों के लिए तो संविधान उस दिन बदल जाता है जिस दिन थानेदारों से कहता है खड़ा हो जा क्या कर रहा है जा भाग जतरा नहीं लिखूंगा रिपोर्ट कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन यू डोंट नीड टू वेट फॉर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन अमेंडमेंट्स कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन अमेंडमेंट तो उन 2% के लिए जो कि प्रशांत भूषण के कमरे में पहुंच सकते हैं जो पाली नारीमान के पास जा सकते हैं बाकी 98% के लिए कोई कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन तो यही है ना सो फॉर ऑल प्रैक्टिकल पर्पसेस मुस्लिम्स हैव बीन रिड्यूस्ड टू द स्टेटस ऑफ सेकंड रेट सिटीजंस इन दिस कंट्री I said without changing a piece of law, but don't worry, even the law is being changed now. For the first time, we have a proposal to amend the Citizenship Act of India. And you know what the proposal is? It's there in Rajya Sabha right now. The proposal is to say that any foreigner who comes and seeks asylum to, in India from Bangladesh, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Myanmar would be accepted and given citizenship of this country provided they are Hindu, Sikh, Baudh, and so on, and Jain. So all the Jains who are coming from Bangladesh are welcome. I don't know how many Jains Bangladesh has. <laughs> all the Sikhs coming from Bangladesh and Pakistan are welcome. What does it mean? It means India is saying for the first time, no Muslim, please, thank you. That religion is for the first time being proposed as a condition for citizenship of India. This is two-nation theory back in the country. So we are back to two-nation days. Two-nation theory, except that it's not being proposed by Mr. Jinnah. This time it's being proposed from the other side. On development, again, I don't need to say very much. 